folks, Mike Griffin here again. <clears throat> Today I wanted to take a few minutes to talk to you about this new kit that I'm putting out called Otto the Gyro. <clears throat> Otto the Gyro was actually conceived and designed by a man by the name of Dick Mathis who lives down in Thibodeau, Louisiana, just a little south of me. Uh, I think it was designed about the year I was born, around 1947. Um, not sure completely about that date, but somewhere around there. Anyway, it's been around for a long time, but it was never kitted. And I talked to Dick Mathis not too long ago, <clears throat> and Dick said, I wish it had been. And I said, well, I'm working on it. So I got with Eric Rule at RSM, and we started talking about it. He did a little CAD work and, uh, on the original design and put it into CAD so we could laser cut the kit. And sure enough, we came up with Otto the Gyro. Um, I wanted to show you uh, what is in the kit and also a little bit about the construction of the kit. This is a really simple little gyro to build. Uh, it's uh, made primarily for fun. Um, it's not a stunt machine or anything like that, but if you like to have balloon bust and fun events, then this thing is perfect for that. Um, it can be either electric or glow. I'm going to talk about both today, but all the ones I've sold so far have been for glow. It would take uh, anywhere from a 35 to a 40 size engine, or maybe even a 46. 25 might be a little sluggish, but you could probably use one, but we've actually got it cut out, <clears throat> the front end, for a, for a 40 size or a 46 size, which a 35 was the same size also. So you <clears throat> shouldn't have to do too much work on the front end as far as getting it, uh, as far as getting it uh, for the size uh, glow engine that you want. Uh, the kit's all laser cut, and like I said, Eric Rule RSM cuts the kits for me. Uh, this is the fuselage. I wanted to hold this up so you could see it. As you can see, when Eric cut it, this is cut out of 3 8 balsa. came in two pieces with a slot and key type thing that you put it together with. Uh, I simply laid these, these two pieces flat, you know, cut them out of the board. Uh, it was laser cut, so all I had to do was just cut the little places where he didn't cut with the laser. Lay them flat, glue them together, and that's the profile right there. Um, what you see, and I, there's a reason why it's 3 8 rather than half inch, and I'll get to that in a minute. <clears throat> but let's look at the front end a little bit. As you can see, he's got it, and I'm going to try to move it a little closer. I hope this works. He's got it so that you can actually you can cut these out. Or they're actually perforated. Uh, and your motor mounts, which are 3 8 by 3 8 will go there. Now, if you want to use electric power instead of you don't need these, then what you would do is that um, for electric power, you have the, this uh, little thing that comes in the kit. It's your firewall and your bearing box and everything, which would actually go into, I don't know whether you can see this or not. I can't see what I'm doing, so I hope this is coming out. Um, these two pieces are glued together to form your quarter inch firewall. It goes in, you, you cut away all this material right here, put your firewall in and mount your electric motor to it. So anyway, what he's done is made it universal so you can use it as a uh, glow or uh, electric power uh, type uh, uh, of uh, gyro. Uh, your, this piece right here this is where your mast goes. It's cut out. Your mast comes up. It's a three-piece mast. I'm going to put this down for a minute. It's made out of three pieces of one-eighth inch plywood. You have two outside pieces and a center piece that is cut out for your one-eighth inch wire. You take one-eighth inch music wire and you bend it to that configuration. Glue this to this piece right here. Lay your wire in there and then sandwich it with this piece. So what you get is this. I already done one. That's your mast. That's your piece of 3 8 inch music wire coming out there. Your rotor will go over this and be held on with a wheel collar. Now let's go back to your, your fuselage again, your profile fuselage. Your mast, this is cut out for your mast. So your mast goes right down in here, like so. and it's glued in. Then what holds this in is that your plywood doublers, which I have right here in my hand, 
course, you lay your, dope, your dopers over like this and glue them both sides. And you have another one on the other side, of course. Here it is right here. You glue on this side. So that would be glued to your mast, and this holds your mast in. And this slot right here that you see in these two slots, these two small slots, and the big slot is for your arm to go through where your lead outs go. The way that works, now I'll lay this down again, it's two pieces of 1 8 inch plywood with the grains running perpendicular to each other. You laminate those two together with epoxy or whatever type of glue you're going to use. Take this, you've glued your, your um, fuselage up like this. This will go through the fuselage, like so. It goes through the fuselage, and on the back side, let me see if I can make this a little bit better for you. On the back side, you can see there's a place to mount your uh, bell crank. Bell crank is mounted as such, it pivots like that, and the lead outs run through these holes that you see right here. Your push rod runs down here to your elevators to control the up and down motion of the, uh, there's no flaps or anything, it's just an elevator on this. But when you look at it from this side, you can see that the arm comes out like this. Your lead outs come out here, okay? At the end of this arm, there's a little piece of this laser cut that goes like this on the end. You just kind of glue it to the end and that's where your lead outs will exit with those little holes that you see there and back to your handle. So that's pretty much it as far as the fuselage. It's a real simple thing. You have a fuselage, two plywood doublers, your lead out guide arm, and then you also have the option of doing it either glow or electric and the little electric package is in there for you if you want it. Now let's talk about the rotors for a second. Well, before we talk about the rotors, we'll talk about the, uh, the tail feathers. Basically you've got an elevator, a stab, and two upright vertical fins or rudders, which are glued like that to your uh, stabilizer. Um, the rotors that go on this, there was one piece that had to be manufactured um, and machined by us that you couldn't probably do, and that is. Uh, the, the hub itself where the rotors go in. The hub had to be machined on a jig so that you get the correct angle of incident for the rotors to lay. So as you can see that's got an angle to it opposing on both sides. Now in the kit you will have two rotors. These are actually made from just a blank board of 3 8 by 3 inch wide by 18 inch um, balsa. And a very good friend of mine by the name of uh, Alan Perrette, who's also a fellow club member, came up with a jig. He's a genius when it comes to making jigs and stuff. And he came up with a jig where we could put it on my bandsaw, clamp it to the table on my bandsaw, stand the uh, 3 8 inch board up and run it through there to cut the angles for you, the leading and trailing edge angles at the, at the proper angle. The reason for this is you have to, this has to have an airfoil to it. And I hate to sand, and I think most people hate to sand. Some people like it because it's therapeutic, but I don't particularly care for it. I think it's boring. So rather than taking just a big hunk of board and having you run it down with a razor plane and try to get the airfoil correct and all that and do all that sanding, we did all that work for you by putting it on the bandsaw running through the jig, we have cut the leading and the trailing edge angles as they should be. All you have to do when you get this is take a sanding block or a piece of sandpaper and just knock that ridge off and round it off a little bit and just smooth it over and that's all you do. That's all you got to do. Now these are cut a little bit long 
So you'll have to, they're supposed to be 15 and a quarter inches, I think. The plan that comes with it will show you exactly the length these are supposed to be. But there will be two of these in the kit. Here's your other one right here. And the hub is a piece of extruded styrene material that uh, Alan had at the house, and uh, or bought and had at the house, and it's not wood. It's a sort of like more of a synthetic type of wood, but it's got the properties of wood. And the original hub <clears throat> was just a piece, didn't, it wasn't in a slot like that, it was just a piece that had the angles cut on it. We wanted a better glue surface. So what we did is we put a top and bottom to this hub. So as you can see, it just slips right into the hub, like so. You have to center it. Draw your line, center it on the hub. Uh, you want to put your glue on both surfaces. Before you do that, you slip in your rotor. I would clamp it a little bit, put a little pressure on it, so glue, you have glue surfaces on both sides. And then, of course, the other one would go in the same way. Okay, like so. Now, these are a little bit long. You're going to have to trim them to the proper length as the clamp says, but you can see how it comes out, just like the rotors on a helicopter. The angles and, and everything uh, are already done for you. So you don't have to do any of that. All you have to do is just sort of finish sanding a little bit, stick them in the hubs and glue them. Now, it's, this is in the kit. The hub is in the kit, so you'll have that. <clears throat> what is not in the kit is a piece of 5 8 brass tubing, which you will want to cut the right length and put into the hub, okay? You want a piece of brass, it's a bushing. Put a piece of 5 8 inch brass tubing. Once you do that, you make your mast out of 8 inch music wire. And it will go through the, the tube and you will have a bushing that the, that the blade will rotate, that the uh, rotor will rotate on. So if you sort of, I'll, I'll sort of show you. You'll need a 5 30 seconds drill bit too, to drill that, that hole with, if it's not drilled out enough. Take a 536. It should be uh, a 530 seconds drill bit. Should be drilled out right, but you might not want one of those hanging around. But anyway, when you assemble this thing, you'll have your rotor blades in there and uh, your brass bushing in the hub. Then you just set this. I'll just use this. It's already made. Let's take the, the mast out. The mast, this goes over the mast, like so. And you'll put a wheel collar right here. You have to cut this to the proper length, of course. You have a wheel collar to hold it on, and it'll spin. That's in the forward motion. When you start, when you launch this thing, the wind will be turning this, this rotor, okay? And that gives it some lift, and it'll bring it up. But basically, that's it. That's, the kit is very simple. Everything that you need is there. All you have to do is, like I said, furnish you a, a piece of 530 seconds brass tubing, a piece of 1 8 inch music wire. The uh, motor mounts, the 3 8 by 3 8 motor mounts will be in the kit. You also need to furnish your own bell crank and push rod and control horn. But that's it. And I hope you enjoy it. We've sold several of these kits. I think they're going to be a blast to fly. I've got to build this kit and test flight, but the, the kit's basically ready to go. So if you like this or you want one, let me know. I think I've got till next Friday before the cutoff date. Any questions? Just email me and let me know. Thanks. Appreciate your time.